Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the Nerd Force One podcast. This is our very first podcast. This is going to be more of an introduction um, kind of thing where we talk about some top five things we're interested in, who we are, what caused us to become nerds, and then just some other random topics thrown in as well. So without further ado, uh, we're going to be talking immediately about our brief nerd origins, just super short, what caused us to become nerds. And I'm going to start with um, Xavier. Ah, oh. Logan. <laughs> That's the worst <laughs> I've ever heard. Zach, begin. Uh, how you? How did you become a nerd? Um, Kraken. Um, yeah, my my surname is Kraken. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> Sir <name. it's> Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I can't get past the Logan. That was really Anyways, bad. Anyways, I know. Uh, I like I said. Um, I think I talked about this before, but uh, Lord of the Rings: Return of the King. The uh, video game helped me get into video games back in the day when that came out i actually got the demo in a box of cereal i don't know why they're giving out a demo in a box of cereal but they did that. it and then i've been watching star wars since i was a baby and uh, when lord of the rings came out came out came out uh i was absolutely obsessed with it and played lord of the rings pretended i played the video games we're we just gonna ignore the, the came's out part pretty much i literally um you know like would kinda... invite myself over to my friend's house uh, Josh, his name was Josh. Invite I'm gonna say his last self. name. Yeah, yeah, Let's because he had, he had Lord of the Rings: Jesus. Battle for Middle Earth on his PC, and I wanted to play that all the time. So I'd literally hang out with the guy for like three or four hours. Um, hang out with the guy. So I enjoyed him. I, I was his friend. <laughs> I was his friend, and I enjoyed hanging out with him. But for a small period of time, it was because I wanted to play Battle for Middle Earth. Who are you trying to convince? Scumbag. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out. His parents. No. What? All right. To come over. Oh, oh wow! So you would invite yourself over? <laughs> what a <Yeah>. scum lord! <laughs> what a scum I'm lord! I'm not proud of it, but I got to play in Battle for Middle Earth. Just saying. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> Do you have anything else to add to that? Nope. Okay. Uh, J Man McGillicuddy. A lot. Uh, I would say probably Dream. two specific instances. Uh, mistaking Majora's Mask for Ocarina of Time. Uh, I that really got into the nerd world as well as lore. <laughs> Uh, and then also, uh, the first time I ever realized, in my opinion, that the animation from Japanese television was just slightly better than American animation. <laughs> uh, it's less choppy. Uh, Why don't you just move to Japan? I, I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> I ain't that dedicated. It does cause problems. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of what I became a nerd from. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not one of those weeaboo trash people, but... Oh, senpai. Uh, you mean the ones that you see on the cringe videos? Yeah, those guys. Those are, ooh, no. <laughs> those are rough. <laughs> those guys are rough, but, uh... Don't mess with me. I've got the power of God and anime, anime on and my side. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> that kid's my idol. Uh, <laughs> Great. You just picked up on my mic, you dummy. <laughs> It's all right. Yours is going oh off. My it's goodness. over nine thousand. <laughs> okay. Did you have anything else to add? <laughs> nah, that's pretty much it. Uh, and of course, Star Wars. Um, that's I think ultimately what's like was the catalyst for it. That's On shot first. Awesome. All right. So we should my, my uh, yeah, I'm going to completely not, ignore that. Not there. My brief summary of how I became a nerd. My first exposure to video games, I believe, was way back early two thousands. I think the first game I ever played was on the Sega Genesis. It was The Lion King, now that I remember it. The Lion King or the first Lord. Sonic, one of those two, which I still own to this day. I rebought it because of nostalgia. What did but we have first? We had the Sega Genesis originally. By the way, me and him are brothers. Yeah, we had the Sega Genesis originally. Who's him? Uh, not you. <laughs> Very much of a Confusion. voice difference. Anyways, yeah, like so the we had the timeline. Well, get the heck out of here. We had the Sega Genesis. I played Lion King, and that was really fun. Didn't have very long because we fought over it way too much, so we had to get rid of it. Oh, then that was the PS1. We fought over all of them. We, didn't, <laughs> yeah, we weren't able enough. to keep a console until the PS2 the only, came yeah. around, um, and that was just for Guitar Hero because my dad liked to play it. It was yeah, more fun for him. Uh, but anyways, we had the computer. I used to play Madden 04 a lot. It had oh. Michael Vick on the cover. That was super fun. <laughs> And I used to play a lot with my friend, uh, my friend Jeremy. Um, we used to play NFL Blitz on the GameCube, and then eventually, <laughs> of course, whenever uh, Halo Three came out, we played a lot of that as well. That was really fun. But and then, of course, movie movie wise, grew up with Star Wars, grew up with Indiana Jones, grew up with Jurassic Park. But of course, my absolute 
I grew up with another movie series that I'm going to mention here in a few minutes on our top five list. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get into our top five list. We are going to do this. Um, we're going to start with number five, and we're going to go just kind of go around the room here and start with the top fives and get down to the one. So, Zach, man, what Indiana is your Jones. number five number five favorite Indiana movies? Jones? Okay, Indiana Jones. Why? Because Harrison Ford. Enough said. Okay, good enough. Actually, I lied because I loved the historical aspect of it. It yeah. was cool. There were Nazis who got their butts kicked. That's always fun. <laughs> and there was like supernatural elements to it, but it was kind of realistic at the same time in a lot of ways. Yeah, because so, you know, the, and then Harrison Ford. <laughs> Those, those those glowing stones and Temple of Doom. I always thought those were truly fact. Glowing stones and the fact that the guy, the guy sticks his hand through hands through hey, chests and pulls out hearts. I've seen That's some really things. Cool. I don't want to know. What I don't think you've see. seen. I those have kinds a glowing stone in my room. I, yeah, I really don't want to know. It's about a that. salt rock <laughs> lamp. That's not the same thing. It glows. Shut the heck up. Who says that he didn't put little 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 lights in the rocks? All right, so that he's officially done. <laughs> Jonah, <laughs> what is your number five favorite movie series or movie? My Little Pony, Uh, probably. So, wait, number five as in, like, it's my least favorite of my favorites? Yes, (laughs) Way to make that Before we let Jonah get to that, which is your favorite of the Indiana Jones movies? Yeah, I want to hear that one. The Last Crusade. The Last Crusade? That's excellent. I would probably say that's my favorite as well. Interesting. All right. Do you want to know why? Well, uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is really good. It's a really close second. I'm just kidding. But The Last Crusade (laughs) is definitely... That wasn't as bad as everyone makes it out. it's not a great... It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. It's probably the worst of the four, but it doesn't make it a bad movie. Jonah. <laughs> Wait until Indy 5 comes out next I, year. Uh, I'm going to say number 5 on my list is going to be the Alien vs. Predator franchise, which is including yeah. Alien and Predators in general. Um, I think it's fun. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't love outer space beings uh, just fighting around the world for no reasons? No reasons. Uh, and <laughs> I, I love expecting AV- that. I love AVP 1 because I think it actually had a really good storyline. Yeah, it did. Uh, a lot of people are just like, it's an Alien and Predators. Oh, yeah. It's really cool. That second one, the pretty alien, was pretty awesome in that, just kicking butts all over the place. And of course, the wolf predator, he's just like, "Well, gotta fix this mess." Um, mm-hmm. So that's. that's Didn't why I like the that. regular predator, uh, one of the predators in AVP two, become an alien predator? You said. No, it was. Uh, I thought it became a hybrid. So of it. at the end of AVP one, you remember the one that got killed by the queen? There, there is a chestburster inside him. So at the end of the I remember movie, that, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then at the beginning of AVP 2, it's showing that scene. And it's huh. just like, oh. Yeah, I don't know I why, totally that, but they that. need to make an AVP 3 soon. That is never going to... Well... Don't... Never say never. Spoilers for Predator. The Predator. That spear from AVP 1? It's in there. Oh, yeah. Hmm. It's there. That's confirmed. Okay. Uh, we discussed this a little. <laughs> my top five. I'm gonna move to that. <laughs> we discussed this a little bit recently, and I had said something else. It peaked. But whenever I think about it, whenever I Sorry. think about it, I I decided to change my mind because this these movies took me by surprise. I absolutely love them. My number five pick is gonna be the Cloverfield series. Mm-hmm. I really like the first Cloverfield. Ten Cloverfield Lane was absolutely amazing, and the Cloverfield Paradox was very underrated on Netflix. I haven't got to. See I like that movie a lot. I to be honest. I I think I saw Cloverfield many first one. years ago. But I it's so different it. from the other two. It's really different. I enjoyed it a lot. Definitely, not, it's probably my least favorite of the three. Ten Cloverfield Lane is easily my favorite of of the bunch, though. Who doesn't like Ten Cloverfield Lane? Yeah. Now, back to your Alien versus Predator top five favorite. Your favorite pick there. Which of those movies is your favorite? Are we including the either series? We can do conjoined or either series. Oh, I'm gonna of, say of all of the them. first Alien movie. First alien movie was fantastic. Uh, it was it was really good for being a sci-fi horror genre, which I don't think was explored back then. Yeah, uh, and Ridley Scott, he's in love. He's great. He's a cool guy. He's me. He's a fantastic actor. He's, he's a good one. Nice. All right. So down to our number four spot. I'm gonna go just reverse. Also, I'll go with myself first. Uh, my number four favorite movie slash series would be Pirates of the Caribbean, or Caribbean, however you want to say it. Absolutely fantastic dun, dun, series, dun, lovable dun, characters. Dun, 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 the initial trilogy had an amazing story arc. Character development was great. My favorite, my happening. favorite of all five, I would probably say is Dead Man's Chest. Though I love Dead Man's Chest. He's like, is it because of the Mister David Jones? No, it's Will Turner. He's really good. I'm just <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, absolutely because of Davy Jones. He's one of the best 
I don't even know if I want to consider him a villain. It's well, he's, he's got a really heartbreaking story. Yeah, he, he he's just a grumpy old tentacle man. He, I guess you would consider him the antagonist of the movie series, but he's so lovable, and I have a connection with him. He's not. I wouldn't say he's the lovable. Real, I have a connection with him, and I understand where he, what he's going through Beckett's, and his frustration. Beckett's real bad, the bad guy. Beckett, yeah, he's but he doesn't the bad show guy. up. Like it's one of those weird movies where the real bad guy doesn't show up till the third movie. Yeah, he's but super you prevalent. Automatically in the third movie. hate this all, son of a gun. He did such a good job all as that four character. Feet yeah, he Five inches up, <laughs> smaller than Napoleon himself. Well, I'm gonna just like yeah. go off and say that, and that I was gonna say number four is probably Pirates. For Pirates me, as well. well, and my At World's End is my favorite. Literally. Yeah, yeah, At World's End is really. Yeah, I think that's the best one. I'm sorry, but I'm always like a, number three. I'm, I'm usually a number three person, where I always think that I'm, I'm my favorites no, are number fair. three, even though they're not always the best. Like in Star Wars, the original trilogy, my favorite is Return of the Jedi, but it's definitely not the best out of that's all. That's the third one. Like, oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying your favorite typically are the third movie. Let's not get into that right now, because just just know that Empire is the best one out of the OG trilogy. That's, yeah, that's in most people's opinions. I can't. Yeah, that's, that. that's that's a that's pretty that's difficult. Good. It's fair. Empire is one of the best movies of all time, though. So that's pretty that's much hard. It really is. Uh, Jonah, number four for you. Uh, I think Glass Samurai. Glass Samurai. Uh, re- this is good. I'm not a huge Tom Cruise fan, like I told you this last time. Yeah, we discussed he's this. He's not, I, I don't think he's that great, in my opinion. Please don't hit me. Uh, I won't hit you. I'm just flipping you off in my mind. Uh, he, I, I just think that he's not that great, but in that movie, as him as uh, Nathan Alder, and he, he really hit it. And, like, I, if he ever does any more, like, historical period movies, I think he'd be really good. Yeah. Because, like, I feel like that was him legitimately acting, whereas, like, we've all seen Interview with a Vampire. That's just Tom Cruise being. He's Tom hamming it up. He's yeah. like, I'm crazy. No, I get that. Look I get at me, that. Jonah. Hey, what's up? Put put that in. Put that in. I don't know about that. Yeah, put that, uh, put I that in. completely disagree on the not liking Tom Cruise thing. Tom Cruise is one of my favorite actors ever. I don't know why. There are definitely better actors in that's for darn sure. But I really <laughs> enjoy watching him on screen. He's he's good As, and he's very that, entertaining. I'm okay with it. Yeah, he's definitely not the best, but he's very entertaining to watch. Your hair looks ridiculous, by the way. That's why I took a picture. Of Fine. Excellent. No, on the side. Right. You went like this, and it's enough like about things out. they cannot see. Oh, so, I just took a picture of it. They definitely can see it. Um, sending it to you, Jonah. Your number three pick for your top five. Timestamp: fourteen minutes. So you can put the picture in. <laughs> number, number, number three is gonna be the uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I Shut like up. It. I like doesn't it. count. Uh, Why? It absolutely does. Yeah, it's absolutely all one does. story. Get it's the heck out of here. It's continuous. We're both on each other's side, so it's just super good. I mean, I, I am, I, I, I don't remember much of Captain America in the comics. I, but I like what they're doing with his character in this, and I like his conflict with uh, Iron Man right now. Um, it's there's still a bit of a conflict there that we haven't seen the resolution of it. But He's more I'm, like Captain Jihad yeah, now. Ex- Dude, he looks awesome now. Uh, but I'm sure someone out of all of them, that. right now, Infinity War is the best one. With the movie. exception of the Avengers, the whole like mm-hmm. the the Avengers movies themselves, mm-hmm. which is your favorite standalone any of any of the characters? Uh definitely Captain America. Okay, now which, which one? Which movie that's not an Avengers movie? It's either gotta be uh, Winter Soldier or Civil War. Okay. Although Civil, Civil War, War is, is basically Avengers, so it is. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say. Winter I Soldier. recently rewatched Winter Soldier. That it's movie so is good. fantastic. I would say it is easily one of the. It's probably in the top five best Marvel movies ever created. Plus, that's when his suit started to look not weird. Yeah, yeah. he didn't look like a, a cheese. Well, Winter factory. Soldier wasn't bad either. He had just the normal. He didn't have the helmet on. He just had the. You that's, know, what he, that's what he's talking solid about. Solid color. That's I thought what he's you said about. Uh, Civil War, or did no, you no, say no, Winter no. Soldier? Winter By Soldier, that time, he no. already had it. It was pretty much. He looks so bad. And the first Avengers movie which is the ultimate fan movie, yeah he was way. super cheesy uh he looks so ridiculous but like i liked i liked the the, the first avenger outfit for some reason but yeah it wasn't like it cringy or anything time, but it was though. yeah if it i was like yeah all right in the 40s it would have been but fine when he's but starting when he's around with the Iron Chitauri, Man. i'm like oh no this is weird <laughs> yeah it wasn't cringy or anything but it good. was not, he's not the best good. Um, interpretation of that outfit or that costume or whatever zach you're number three my number three would probably be okay. I think you're going looking at the wall of Blu-rays. No, well <laughs> that cheap. helps too because there's a lot of series I like. I would say Jurassic Park. Yeah, Jurassic Park. Say, uh, wall of okay. Stuff. Jurassic Park. That's fair. Why? 
Why is it your favorite? Is Dinosaurs. It okay. Okay. <laughs> and mainly Jeff Goldblum. That's fair. So I'm a, I, I'm guessing it's probably safe to say that the second one's your favorite. Which second one? Lost the Lost World. World. Okay. Yes. The only second one. Stupid question. Was Jurassic that? World and Jurassic Park are two different trilogies. Exactly. You said Jurassic Park. Oh my goodness. You specifically said Jurassic Park. Fine. The Jurassic series. Okay. Fine. So the second one. The yeah. time period or the movies? Okay. Here we go. So the Lost World is his pick. I don't know what. He's Sorry, X Men. So I was thinking about putting you up there, but. All right. My number three pick is Logan. the Star Wars series. Absolutely love Star Wars. Super nostalgic for me. Loved them from a kid. They were quote unquote family friendly, but had depth to them and a great story. They're they're, they're PG. Did you say you love them for my kid? Love them Did from I? a kid. I think oh, loved them well, as a kid. Maybe it's less everything about that is still weird. I was like, oh, oh I love them from a kid. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds <on>. super <laughs> weird. Okay. Yeah, so Star Wars is my <laughs> number three. I think pick. Chris Hansen's knocking. Uh, love those movies. My favorite of the entire franchise would be the OG Star Wars. A New Hope, or just Star Wars, nineteen seventy seven. That's my favorite. I love the beginnings of things. Typically, typically the first is going to be my absolute favorite in a series. I like the start of things, not necessarily the completion. I like to see where it comes from. So, uh, in that aspect, and for Star Wars wise, so it's definitely technically, a new hope. you like Episode One the best. Bum, no. bum, <laughs> bum. of the original or of the prequels, <laughs> Phantom Menace. Of even course. though I'm probably going to get slapped for this. Phantom Menace, I absolutely love that movie. Yeah, I think well. the people who like rip cut out on the, the Jar Jar Phantom, parts, it's awesome. Uh, the people who rip on the Phantom Menace are just stupid. No, because they're just for, wrong. For, like it's like Attack oh, it's the, the worst movie worse. possible. Well, Attack that, of the Clones is clearly the worst. It has the worst camera. It looks like a B movie. The only great cheese. parts of the movie any are of the, the fighting, fighting sequences scenes are great, but any and of, the overall story, well, the overall story, and the Camino cool. stuff was awesome with everyone. Um, well, here's the thing about Episode One. You see my rage meter on this. That animatronic Yoda was the most horrifying thing. That's no true. I'll give you that. Fixed it. <laughs> that's, I'll give it you is, that. I'm so glad they, they stuck switched with the puppet. it over to the CG one. It was, that was of terrifying. Nightmare. Somehow the puppet was better than the oh animatronic one. Oh my goodness. That's fair. Okay. So that was number three. Uh, we're going to go to number two, and we're going back to you, Zach. What's your number two of all time? Lord of the Rings. The Middle Earth series. I'm going to say my number one and number two are tied. Like I said, it's just... Apples and oranges, you can't really... I will, I'll say my number one in a minute, but I mean, the the Middle Earth series, I would say, um, as a whole. And if I were to pick my favorite one, it would be The Return of the King. Okay. That's fair. Jonah, back to you, Pe- number two. It peaks when I toot uh, on I'm the, actually on the calling a, a, a tie, much like Jonathan over here did, but it's not going to be for one. It's just going to be because I can't decide which one's better or second one. Uh, it's between Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. Uh, I just recently got into Harry Potter. Oh, your pothead, no. Uh, you just learned that term like a week ago yeah. when I said I that. I said that? Never mind. Anyway. I'm not kidding. Uh, I think it's a very good storyline. <laughs> I remember the third movie when it was good, and, remember, and when we were watching it. I thought the third movie was great. I think That's it's the my favorite. That's the time travel one, right? Yes. yes. But um, the de- both of Deathly Hollows are pretty good, in my opinion. Uh and I also like what is that Order of the Phoenix with that lady with the who tries yes, to take over the school. Phoenix. Oh man, Ugh. that was so I good. love those Del- movies. Dolores Umbridge, yeah, actually. and that mo- like that movie was so good too. They're all great. I mean, I I don't remember the last like up until the Half Blood Prince, no, or the last two, the Deathly House Part One and Two. I don't remember like the like the last like five and six before those ones came out very well, but I remember seeing them. But that lady. Oh my god, she is the villain of the Harry Potter that, series. That, she was the morning got nothing on her. <laughs> if she wanted to take over, she would have had more success than Voldemort did. Can I just point out that no Ray Fiennes, who was uh, Voldemort, also was that Nazi guy in Schindler's List. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's in a few things. He's I didn't in, really no, He's in a love movie with uh, is, Jennifer Lopez. My point is are they trying to say he that Voldemort nose. is a Nazi? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but there um, go. Lord of the Rings. Messages. Lord of the Rings, uh, be- because you know it's it's also good. Uh, Return of the King, my favorite. Um, completion as well as it's just a dang good movie. Yeah, and just that end. That's like four hours long. I remember when I was a edition. kid, seeing, literally seeing that in theaters. It's right. absolute amazing I movie. Cried. One of the most nominated and awarded movies of all time, still to this day, which is impressive in its own right because it's a fantasy favorite medieval movie. Ro- it's crazy. 
Once this top five list is over, I have a question. Do not click on it. My number two is, without a doubt, the Harry Potter series. And I'll even include Dungeons and the Beast in there because it's, it's all part of the same universe. But um, Harry Potter kind of grew up with this as a kid. I was able to watch like the first two VHSs over and over again at my grandma's house, VHSs. but I was never allowed to own the books or the movies. So we're allowed to watch to, them, but we weren't allowed, yeah, we weren't allowed to, to have watch them. them. We, weren't allowed, we weren't allowed to own them just because witchcraft and stuff like that. But anyways, I read them up to like the fifth one in elementary school anyways because Rebel, um, and they were great, <laughs> and I, I loved them then, Rebel so I started Heart. rewatching them whenever I was deemed old enough again, and absolutely Some fantastic movies. Love those watch. movies. They're so close to being my number one, but my number one, without a doubt, is just it, uh, it will never be beat. Do you want to? Do you want to go into the number one of which, segment? Segway. Speaking of which, my number one pick is Lord of the Rings. Hey, The Hobbit's in there too, but it's easily Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings are definitely better movies and mm, better story. <laughs> Better movies. Let's go. Uh, better us, pizza, though. Papa John's. The only uh, reason why I'll give you better movies <laughs> is because of the Rivertown little white guy. No, because they're better suit. movies. They genuinely are better movies. And the GoPro scene. Mm. No, they're just this. I mean, the Hobbit's a great story, but the no, the, well, I'm saying the curve and the the tale, the how epic Lord of the Rings are, and the I'm way saying, that it was done cinematically. Story. We're not talking about books. Talk about the movies. I know. And they they. Really pushed those stories out in the hobby that definitely did not need to, even though I'm a huge fan. But Shut Lord of the Rings, without a doubt, my favorite is the Two Towers of that series. I absolutely love that movie. That's probably most people's least favorite. It's usually the Return of the King or Fellowship of the Ring. Most people I talk to say Fellowship of the Ring or Return of the King are their favorite. Hmm. Uh, my think, Two Towers, without a doubt. I think Two Towers, it feels like it drags on, but it's. It it's, does, but I absolutely love it. It's very important, though. Is this it? Yeah. Yeah, Helm's Deep this is so my favorite battle. Saruman and then the bombs come off. <laughs> Helm's, Helm's Deep is my favorite battle in the movies, and I just love, I love the separation, like the different how the storyline kind of breaks out into different paths, and you have each bunch of characters with their own story at that point. My favorite character being Merry and him with Pippin. Um, their storyline's really fun. I shouldn't say it's fun. It's it's not so fun. No, it's not. <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not fun for them. It's but it's very enjoyable for me to watch. And then, of course, the summer. three amigos, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli. The three amigos. <laughs> their storyline is absolutely amazing because yeah. Helm's Deep is fantastic. And then Frodo and Sam, absolute legends. Of course, their story progression, adding Schmeagol to their little storyline, Schmeagol slash Gollum, just added more depth and weight to their their journey. And it was awesome. So that's my number one pick. Zach, number one. Well, like Look I said, my wall. number one and my number two are tied, but I would definitely have to say... Spy Kids? My, yes. <laughs> um, but my number one, well, I would put it number one because I grew up with it and, uh, I've, and I've known it longer. My first love is the Star Wars. The um, Star Wars. The Star Wars. And, uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it is what it is. I mean, everyone knows Star Wars. They know how epic it is. And if you don't have a reason why it's so epic... What? I'm farting. I'm sorry. What am Stop I supposed to do? Stop doing that. This is supposed to be professional, at least slightly. I'm sorry. I don't want to hold my gas in and blow up. At least try not to do it loud, you animal. Moving on. Anyways, as I was saying before so rudely interrupted. How am I disrespectful when you're farting during the podcast? <laughs> in an enclosed room Get the heck out with of a here. fan of swell. My Anyways. Face. My favorite, um, I mean, it's a tale of Luke Captain Skywalker oh, and man. just his, <laughs> shut up. You wanted to bring Michael Bolton into this. I hey, did, so. we and did I it. I did it. We did it. All right, joke's made. Moving on. Um, yeah, it's just a good story. I'm not going into it. If you don't know, you, you're stupid. Yeah, My what, favorite Star Wars movie. The things movie, that have been said about Star Wars, it's all been said. It's really hard because the new movies, um, the new movies have a lot of good things going on for them. I would say out of the Skywalker saga, which is the six fil- five films so far, I'm sorry. Um, well, no, no, no. It's God, eight. eight films. I'm so stupid. It's all the Sky- Well, it's, it's all six the- film is the Skywalker saga. No, and it's all eight. Seven and eight, they specifically said, is not about them anymore. It is about Rey. Well, it is no, her saga. They, they are a, involved. It's a passing of the baton. Yeah, but they, is, but they said- We don't know if she's a Skywalker yet. Moving on. I really hope they don't. I would say my Skywalker. favorite one would probably have to be Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. There is a tie. You have to pick one. I have to, <laughs> you pick, have to pick one. I have to pick one. Then it's neither of those and it's Attack of the Clones? I kill myself. <laughs> um, I'm not picking one. I'm bleeping you. I'm 
stop. Uh, but I, out of the spinoff movies, I really think that Solo may have been my favorite, and I'm really sad that it was so underrated. And it's uh, underrated for sure. And it, it bombed good. at the box office, but I, I really enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed it thoroughly as well. I prefer Rogue One, though. It, for me, it was just more A New Hope. It was better than Rogue One, in my opinion. Fight me. I'm not going to fight you. <laughs> I liked both of them. I just, for me, like I said, it's just more, it ties exi- right into A New Hope and pretty much starts, it ends where A New Hope starts, and I love that. I for thought, me, it's just more. I thought when that scene happened, for anybody. Um, Dude, it's been out for like two years. Just say it. I thought that it was going to go straight into, like, I thought it was going to begin in You mean with four. Vader? And you're going to sit through episode four. I was like, oh, we're theater? doing this? <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It's you, mean with, two hours. you mean with Vader? Yeah, if going you got, and slicing people up? If you haven't seen that movie, in, or if why wasn't he that doing movie, that with Obi-Wan? But, why wasn't he doing that? Because <laughs> the movie came out in 1977, and they didn't have the budget to train an old man. David Prowse was an old man. I'm talking about the other guy, Leslie Nielsen. Okay. Get out right now. So, Get out. <laughs> <laughs> so, officially, Jonah, what is your number one pick? Star Wars. And which of the series? <laughs> it's a tie between two, not episode two. It's terrible. Uh, three and six. Completions. Um, three, three is very underrated. Three. It gets crapped on because it's part of the Cleveland. <laughs> prequel series come on but again it's excellent say that one more time uh i i really like three uh, despite I, I don't care what people say about hayden christian i think yeah. i think he's all right um he was given the hand that he was dealt and he had to play with the, the the music in that movie was amazing the the, the choreography holy crap i don't care how long it was i could have spent more than 30 minutes watching yeah that. Well, when you think that it's going to be the last Star Wars movie ever made, George Lucas, you wanted to make it count, and he made it count. Well, what, they choreographed that for like six months or something like that? I don't it's, know. It's ridiculous to think about. But so, And then Return of the Jedi, because same concept as 3, you see him turn into Darth Vader, and that spoiler alert, uh, you see <laughs> You see him turn into Darth Vader, and then Spoiler you see from, him <laughs> from 13 <laughs> years ago, and then you see him uh, redeem himself to go back in to Skywalker, and and that's I, and die. All right, yeah, yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. That's nice. I mean, Anakin dies. Yeah, we'll give you that. No, Anakin lives because mm-hmm. he, he comes back as a force. He, he revives. Goes. Okay. Anyways. Favorite orc in Lord of the Rings? Lurks. That weird one from uh, the Hobbit with the arm. You mean Azog? I don't remember their names. They sound like Cthulhu monsters. Well, okay. If you're, does Urukai count? Because I said Lurks. That's Lurks. an orc. Yeah. Like Urukai is just like a steroid infused orc. What What's the deal with that one? They're They're like humans and orcs combined, or something like that. Well. Uh-oh. The original orcs wait, were wait, elves and wait. Uh, let's save this for lore cast. Aha! Tune in to our other <laughs> <My favorite>. podcast <laughs> style show, Lorecast, where we talk about all things lore. Lorecast so, brought to you by us. Lorecast. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite orc, I would probably have to say, is the one that talks like this. Oh yeah, the third one. Release them. Where he has like the pug face of orcs. Yeah, like and he's pug. got the little gimpy yeah, arm. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say pug face. That's what he. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a pug. He's probably my favorite. Awesome. Pause. For station identification. And we'll pause. To commit Keep this audio in. This is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. Do you know the words? Brief. Seven seas. Tortuga. All I remember of that. <laughs> all I remember that is the part. <laughs> I I just remember that part. Where it was like David Jones, Johnny Depp, giant squids. I remember the really inappropriate part at the end. Oh, where he's going into. Roger that. Let me try with another film. <laughs> Life is a box of chocolates. His name is Forrest Gump. That. Oh my goodness. I need to actually get that song legally. <laughs> okay. I'm set now, so we're going to move on. All right. Our next top five list. We're going to try to speed this one up a little bit, so a little bit less bring, chatty bring. on this one. But it's a little bit less to talk about anyway, so 
Um, we're going to move on to video games, your top five video games. I'll start with myself. My top five. Why don't we do three? We'll, we'll do. We'll, we can do five. If, if you can do five, do five. Time. But we could do five, and I think we can do it quick. We don't have to talk about too much as to why. We can keep it a little brief. If you don't have five, that's fine. My number five pick is Portal 2. Specifically Portal 2. I love Portal 1, Portal 2. Awesome. I actually played that one first, and the puzzles were awesome. Characters were awesome. Simple. If you haven't played it, I suggest it. I recommend it. Jonah. Uh, five being uh, Jedi Knight Outcast mm-hmm. and Jedi Knight Academy. Uh, love Kyle Katarn. He's super funny. Uh, he's also everybody's dad, or at least he looks like it. And he sounds like it, too. <laughs> uh, but... Also, those games, you actually, it, there's no health bars in the game, or at least physical ones. So, yeah. when you cut off somebody's arm, you're cutting off their arm. There's no health bar. If you get them perfectly, that's awesome. It's amazing. I've actually never played it. That's so good. You actually you actually feel like, you know, like if you played Force Unleashed, you, there's a health thing. You're going to get those really good. Yeah. You hit them in the right Which spot. Which is unrealistic, because with a lightsaber, you would imagine if you slice them through the chest, they're dead. Yeah. That's, that's Jedi Knight. I like it. Zach. Halo 3. Halo 3 is your number 5? Yeah. I like it. I like okay. Because it's good. I'm on a talkative Zach today. Sweet. <laughs> so, uh, number 4 for me, I'm going to, I'm going to, we discussed this more recently, but as I thought about it, I decided to change my mind last minute. It is Assassin's Creed, but I am going to go with Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Yeah. For the specific reason, it's Pirates. It's awesome. They made so many more improvements on the Assassin's Creed 3 engine, adding the 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 awesome ship sailing that they just they made it more in depth and it was just awesome. Just something new and fresh. And I was gonna say, cool. you don't remember that in Assassin's Creed 3? No, it was in three, <laughs> but it was way better in four. That's for darn sure. And it was awesome just as good in Rogue. If you haven't played Rogue, it's awesome. Jonah, number four. Uh, Assassin's Creed 3. Okay. Uh, nobody gives that game credit. I love that game. It's like okay, Connor is shallow. We'll agree with that. Yeah. Uh, but, but Atham though, Atham, Atham was, was awesome. awesome. And you know is what else? Is that the fourth guy? Is that Assassin's Creed Four? No, Hatham is. Without spoiling too much, Hatham is a relative of Connor, and Edward is also a relative <laughs> of Hatham. Never mind. Just continue. Uh, I don't care that play much. the games. They're awesome. Okay, so three. Yeah, it's great. But you know what's even better? That DLC from three. Oh, Freedom Cry. No, I know what he's talking about. Oh, that was Freaking not. King no, Washington. Washington. King yeah, Tyranny of King Washington. Those were fantastic. Oh my I really like those. Those I like being able to, to play to with play. like the animal abilities and stuff like that. Yeah, the animal Super abilities, cool. but also like the historical fiction where it's like Yeah, where George Washington. Hey, George now, Washington like, went absolutely and just crazy. insane. Yeah, I liked that twist too. Honestly, he built a really pyramid cool. in like only... New York. <laughs> that was really cool. I want to play those games really bad. Start with three. The third one, and three. then I want to play the fourth one, and then th- th- there's only a few handful of games that I actually want to play. The third one, the fourth one, and then the last two. I take that back. I wouldn't start with three if you're if you don't want to play the Ezio trilogy or three, just go with four, because then you're not. Well, I love the I love the I love the revolution. I'll look up a wiki or something Um, like that and figure out. So there's a lot to it, but I would definitely recommend if you don't want to play the other ones, start with four if you actually play one because that one doesn't connect. But Odyssey and well, not Odyssey, but uh, they're they're Egypt and they're re they're re they're redoing three for Odyssey, remastering it, yeah. yeah, bundling it in. Oh, I see. This is cool. Yeah. Is cool. Anyways, let's move it. And move the, Ezio along. the Ezio collection came out on a remaster. Oh, yeah, cool. it's great. Everybody, hop off Ezio. You get it. Sounds pretty. Move All along. Right. <laughs> Number not that cool. <laughs> Number three favorite favorite game. John, I'll start with you. What? Number three favorite game. Did you say your number four? No, I'm switching things up. Go pro. Oh, you didn't say four? Huh? You didn't say your favorite your fourth favorite game? What? No, Did I, I didn't. You? I guess. Oh, yeah. then say four. Uh, Assassins of Kings, Witcher Two. Oh, I, <laughs> I was like, Rob, what? I thought you were making something. I thought you were, <laughs> I thought you were making up like Call of Battlefield type of crap. No, Assassins of Kings, one of the best RPGs I've ever played in my life. Okay, I think we played it. I don't have much to say on it. Looks cool though. It's amazing. The trailer was super Freaking awesome. Carol. I'll say that. The, oh the trailer yeah, for Witcher the are intro, some of the best trailers ever. If you never play the game, that's fine. But that's go watch awesome. the yeah. intro the, the, yeah. for uh, Witcher Two. The rendered trailers oh, are absolutely yeah. fantastic. It is amazing. Assassin's Freaking Creed has Carol. some good ones too, but Witcher, they're just Carol's really my favorite cool. Character of all time. Assassin's Creed has the best trailer. Movies. They have really pretty good trailers. Good. I love their trailers. Anyways, Even for their worst games, they're good. Three. Uh, so, <laughs> number four. Or four. Three. Three, yeah, that. Majora's Mask. Okay. Uh, gotta live with the consequences. Yeah. 
Three days. Deal with it. Also, okay. it's the uh, okay. So, it's the only Legend of Zelda game without the Triforce in it that I think actually works. Mm-hmm. I think it's really well done, and the animation on that's probably the most thing you can say. We have almost nothing to say on Zelda. Myself and Zach. Jonah nothing. is our relative. He is our, he's our resident, sorry. He's our resident Zelda guy of the group. because He's he's not really he's my blood or relative, Zelda. but close enough. Well, you, are you not counting that time that we were out in the backwoods and we cut our hands open and we like... Licked them off? Touched each other's nips? Yeah. That's not that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you thought he was going to get away with that one. <laughs> okay. Zach, number three. Number three for me would probably... Oh, that's a tough one. Because I really... I would say I had a blast playing Diablo 3. I would say Diablo 3. Diablo 3 is a good one. Me and my friend Daniel played it for like eight hours in a row one time. And we follow? didn't. Well. He's, he's got two left. I've got two left. And it's another one of those tie situations probably. That's cheating. Great. Yeah, that's cheating. You know cheating. ties for a number one. Well, God, it's cheating. Move along. Okay, so I'm going to say. Diablo 3 is fun. Yeah, it's a good game. Uh, I'm definitely our multiplayer guy of the group. Mm-hmm. The other guys aren't so much in multiplayer as I am. Well, I'm not a Call of Duty shocked. hater like they are. Like no, they are. I still enjoy playing those games. But I'm a huge fan, so my number three, I'm uh, a huge Fortnite. fan. Fortnite. No, <laughs> definitely not. It was cool for the first week, but then I immediately wanted to crap myself. It was cool for the first hour for me. Yeah, that's fair. But my number three, anyways, is Smite. Mythological gods yeah. fighting in a battle arena, stupid awesome MOBA. Really, I cool. bought the God Pack too. It's really it's awesome. awesome. I bought it on PS4 and Xbox. You bought the God is, Pack is, like five years ago. Is Moses going to be the next character they add in? Mythological gods. They Moses not was used, never. Moses is not considered actually, a god. Su- actually, there's true. some that think he is. So, that's funny. Now that you say that, I would love you, though. <laughs> but they have not gotten Jesus to any Christ- Christian gods. That is a little weird. Uh, you would have thought they would have att- attacked. He's, he's, I he's would love to see Jesus in there. Like I was gonna say that as a joke, but I didn't know. I'm as long as no, they're not. They're, being they're like, going old school like, mythological gods, so Hindu, like old Hindu gods, Mayan gods, Aztec Egypt. gods. How can they get away with that? Greek gods. Have, you know what? That's a different, they probably do. That's a different topic. But yeah. video games. Okay, so that was my number three, and so we'll move on to number two. I'll start with myself. My number two. Has a lot of nostalgic ties. It was the first ex- original Xbox game I ever played, which was Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Also, my first open bum, world bum, game bum, of all time. And that bum, game had bum, one, yes, has the best soundtrack of every of any game ever. Absolutely amazing. And really fun pretty high mechanics. There. Oh, it's yeah, great. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say a negative on that one, in my opinion. But Because Skyrim opinion. is better? That makes sense. They stole everything from Morrowind. Okay. Stole. Someone's yes, better. Because <laughs> you always say that. You're like, the Skyrim soundtrack's better. I'm like, it's the Morrowind soundtrack. No, it's the Morrowind theme song. Yeah, done really. better. And it's the entire Elder Scrolls theme song. It's if you listen to their more, mobile game, if you listen to the we're not ESO talking about We're not talking about fact. We're not talking about opinion here, sorry. We're talking about facts. And factually, Morrowind has a better soundtrack. That... <laughs> that's go, my number two you pick you should go into politics I love it that's how politics work you just claim things and it's truth <laughs> number two Joe. 50 million genders. another tie uh, yeah no I'm doing, do it. I'm doing it you, you yell at me while. for a tie but you go you started this you literally started this I will finish this uh, it, literally it is... I think I'm gonna go speed last. it up boys uh, Skyrim you know reasons okay. uh, and then God of War 2018 there you go right. I think uh, that is uh, well, like how, whatever claim it uh, a praise is getting, it deserves and more because mm-hmm. you're seeing a more mature version of that game. Not all the, yeah, not all the like hey, get that bootylicious woman out here. Uh, <laughs> is that how they say? You're it? seeing him raise his yeah, son. Yeah, she. <laughs> I want someone to have booty you're, over there. You're seeing him raise his son in an unfamiliar environment, in Norse mythology, where he just came from <laughs> kicking Zeus's butt, and she's like. Hey? So, and also I love the idea of mixing mythology, so, uh, which is surprising I have not gotten in Smite yet. If you don't like multiplayer games, you won't like no, it, but I the hate, concept I is awesome. Multiplayer. Hey, you're screaming. Yeah. So, number two, Zach. Hey, brother. Fallout 3. There it is. Yay, we did it. All right. Podcast yeah, I over. absolutely know what his number one's going to be, because he's going to make it some crappy tie, and it's going to be nonsense, <laughs> just like Jonah did. So I'll move on to my number one, my number one, so we can get into your guys' dumb picks, whatever. My number one is an actual good game. It's Dark Souls. I'll punch him in the nose. <laughs> Ow. 
I'm just trying to trigger Zach here. It's working. Uh, my a lot of weapons in Dark this room, Souls. and I will use them. The lore super adept, super awesome. It's a sad game. It's an awesome game. Bosses are super cool looking. Combat Why super smooth and fluid. Why are you fondling his heater? I'm trying to find the swords. <sighs> I found them. That's my, that's my number one. <laughs> I, I quit. <laughs> Mine's Skyrim and Short Pillars lives. of Eternity. Pillars of Eternity is an isometric RPG, much like in the same vein as Baldur's Gate. And the Icewind Dale series. And it's fantastic and beautiful to look at and a lot of fun. Skyrim is Skyrim. If you don't know what it is, you're also stupid because they've sold it like five Yeah, what now. rock are you living under if you don't know what Skyrim That's is? That's true. It's one of the biggest games ever. Even people who don't play RPGs know what Skyrim is. Jonah, I'm going to guess your number one pick. What are you guessing? Is it The Sims 3? <laughs> no. Okay. Can, I'll give you one more guess. I know what it actually is. I do. All right. What is it then? Ocarina of Time. Absolutely it is. I would say... You had Skyrim in there the last time you told me about no. your top five list. Absolutely not. Hey, he's consistent. Hey, we we haven't done this before. This is the first time the la- No, I'm saying when we discussed our top five list before... No, no, no. Absolutely. Like, I don't he's know been, he's been consistent. He's every, never, single, every single time he's talked about this. top five, it's been Ocarina of, Ocarina of Time. The ones in the middle may have changed, but That's number true. one... Number one is definitely Ocarina of Time. It was so revolutionary for its time. Even though Aaron Hansen from Game Grumps loves to take a crap on that game every time he gets chance. Aaron Hansen with the Iron Embassy? <laughs> <laughs> he is Chris Please have a son. <laughs> yes. Please have a seat and play this game. Like, Duh! I'm Aaron! <laughs> <laughs> that's about right. All right. It's, All right. it's great. And that's, that's it for games. So we're going to move on to television shows. Let's make this. Let's just breeze through this. I don't watch TV. You watch a lot of TV. <laughs> I'm going to breeze through this real quick. I'm just going to go through my top five. I'm not going to say anything say about two. them. They're self-explanatory. If you haven't seen them, I recommend watching them. My number five, Full Metal Alchemist, not Brotherhood, the original. Awesome series, awesome anime. Uh, number three, Home Improvement, one of the best sitcoms of all time. Wholesome, funny, awesome. Number three, Avatar The Last Airbender, mm-hmm. one of the best Americanized anime, pseudo-animes ever created. Has yeah. Awesome storyline, awesome characters, super Sumo. great. Number two is Vikings. That story is just awesome. Characters Arr. are awesome. No. Super cool. Mythological gods, Norse gods, it's awesome. Number one, easily for me, Breaking Bad, without a doubt. It's been my number one since I finished that show. That show. I am the danger. I am a danger, okay. <laughs> one of the best shows ever, one of the best written shows, has a beginning, has an end. It's near perfection. If you haven't watched it, I recommend it. Jonah. Uh, so number five, Bob's Burgers. I think it's really funny. Awesome. Show. Hilarious. We were Hilarious, just watching yeah. it earlier. It's great. Yeah. Uh, uh, number four, I'm going to go with Vikings, simply because of the same reasons you have it. Uh, three, Avatar Last Airbender. It's great. Uh, two, Boondocks. That's a great show, too. I haven't seen too much of it, but what I have watched is hilarious. It's it's also on the same level as Chappelle's show, but I'm not going to do a tying or whatever. Uh, number one being Code Geass. That show. Super good. Jonah got me into that show recently. Mm-hmm. I watched it in the last year. Blew my mind. One of the best shows I I've seen in a long time. I will give an honorable shout out to uh, My Hero Academia right now, which if you're not watching it, go watch it. Really I heard good. this from somebody else today. It's super good. I, I, like, and I don't, and I don't tell people to start shows that I don't know we're going to get finished or not. But yeah, the storyline is so good. I think the movie just came out. Uh, we're dating this, by the way. Uh, and I honestly recommend it. Dubbed or subbed, I don't care what you people want. Just watch it. It's good. It's really On good. a side note, and as an additional footnote for Code Geass, if you're not 18 in uh, the United States, yeah. do not watch it without your parents' supervision or their blessing, because it has some mature themes that are necessary for the story. It is okay, I would say, to shut your TV off and leave headphones in to listen to what's being said. Yes. Season one, it's that's it's, what I did. It's important for character development. Season two, we know what we're doing. Yeah, but a lot of the scenes there's there's a specific. Watch the show. I won't spoil anything. If you can put headphones in, plug it to your PS4 controller, or whatever, turn your TV off and listen. That's very important to hear what's going season on. Season three, we don't know about that. True, that's coming. Can I plug headphones into my Xbox controller and listen? I haven't tried that. The PS4 definitely works. You know the PS4? Mm-hmm. Plug regular headphones into it. Learning new things every day. It's awesome. Zach, your turn. Mash top three is top my five. number five. Okay. It's a great show. That's an Excuse awesome show. Excuse me. I didn't expect Mash. I'm sorry. 
Mash is one of the greatest no, shows yeah, no, of all it's, time. It's, it's really good. No, don't get me wrong. It also it also has one of the most viewed finales to this day, even more than Seinfeld. It was the most viewed. It's crazy um, for the longest time. Up, I think it might be the most viewed show. Seinfeld was sad. I'm not much of a Seinfeld guy. I heard it was sad because it was bad. It's not. I don't think. Anyways, moving on. This is my top five. Shut up. Jerry Seinfeld even said he's he stopped on the top. <laughs> Moving four. on. Four Bob's Burgers, three The Office. No, I'm going to say that from the. He's going to uh, save it for later. He's, we'll he's twitching. Later. <laughs> uh, three or four Bob's Burgers, three, um, probably The Walking Dead. Oh, the two, Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. The Christopher Walking Dead. Um, Oops. Uh, two, um, I don't know, something stupid like Deadliest Catch. I. Uh, only I only, only had people four. People died doing that. Then how is it you, stupid? If you only had four, why did you start at number five? Number one, The Office. <laughs> <Ugh>. Okay. <laughs> all right. So that's the end of our top five list uh, oh, of well. all time. We are going to move into another discussion here. We're going to have a little break for an advertisement. Um, get into the advertisement. I was like, are we sponsored? <laughs> yeah. That was uh, fast. S- sponsored by Lorecast. Uh, <laughs> coming to you soon on YouTube everywhere. Look at me. You put that back right now. Sponsored. Feel free to cut this out. And so he cut it out. <laughs> That's being cut. All right. Awesome. So a quick talking Help point. Myself. We're trying to keep these podcasts to roughly about an hour, hour 15. Uh, so I am going to. Although let to, us how you feel. Let, let us know how you feel about that. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody who's watching, if you want it longer or shorter. Mm-hmm. Well, sure's not gonna happen. Yeah, an hour minimum for us longer. definitely. But if you want us longer, want it longer, definitely let us know. But we do have a little bit. We're gonna have. To, we'll start with this topic if we have time for a little bit more. Then we'll keep going. So the topic, at, the first topic we're gonna go with is gonna be the, our favorite console of all time, and why specifically that console. So, Zach, we'll start with you first. What is your favorite console of all time? That does not include PC. Any PCs um, are excluded. Specifically, console. Yeah. Atari 5800. You, that's not even the thing, first of all. Isn't it? No. <laughs> no. Are you sure? Positive. 5200 is the... That's what, I, that's what I said. No, it's not. That is not what Favorite you Favorite console all. of all time. Greatest console of all time. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's tough. I would have to probably... My initial my initial thought is the 360. I would say that's an e- easy baseline for me. That's great. But I did um, the very, very few games I played on the Genesis. I love the Genesis a lot, too. It was a lot of fun. And uh, the original Xbox has a million uh, good games on there, too. So if I were to have to pick one, I would probably just defer to the 360 because I'm most familiar with it. But I do have fond memories of the Genesis. Okay. Jonah? Sega. Uh, I'm, I'm torn, but I'm, I'm not going to do He's it. probably going to say Nintendo. N64, I'm guessing. Even though that controller is an absolute dump Actually, machine. Actually, no. I'm not going to say N64. That was, okay. that was the, the, the initial thought. It was initial yeah. thought. As much as I love Ocarina of Time, the Groove Mask, I, I still love the GameCube better because it GameCube had was awesome. it had way more right. versatile games in my opinion. And the controller was one it of the best awesome. to this date. It's still absolutely and it had, fits your hands and perfectly. And it had Metroid Prime One and Two. Yes, I played Crash Bandicoot games. on that son of a gun. Okay. Hey, have you ever seen the GameCube intro with the Spider Man? You should look it up if you haven't seen it. Moving on, so <laughs> yeah, GameCube was awesome. Had a lot of. <laughs> I recreated that too perfectly. <laughs> I hate you both. Please kill me. GameCube was awesome. Had a lot so of cool tired. titles. A lot of cool titles. Plus, so. it, was like, it, it was super portable for its time. It had Yeah, it was super portable and had a lot, some, a lot of awesome attachments. Have you seen the Game Boy Player attachment? Yeah, I was going to say, that did was you awesome. ever get the battery pack and the attached like, laptop thing for the top But of have it? you seen the I've Switch? I've never even seen that. That's super cool. Yeah. The Switch is That's really super cool. portable. Yeah. I think I might just cut his entire audio. That's what I was going to say. He's out. <laughs> this might be the JD so show from now the on. JD show. <laughs> hey. I started this thing. And we're ending it. Hmm. Just kidding. I forced only started because here. you had money first. <laughs> That's the only reason you started I it first. I had a kid first. So. But, yeah, so you got tax returns. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So my favorite console of all time, uh, none of the games on my list, actually, I don't think. No, definitely they were not on on this console, but my easily my favorite console of all time, just from the sheer amount of 
variety and the mass amount of games was easy to PS2. Had God of War, so had Ratchet Com. Clank, had Jack and Daxter, had SOCOM, had Gran Turismo, it had NFL. It had so many good just random Guitar titles. Hero. Yeah, it had, good, that's where Guitar Hero solid was two and three on it. Yep, two and three. It it had so many good games on there for and, any and games that we've never even played before. If you've ever watched any channels like Metal Jesus Rocks and those retro retro gaming shows, like there's so many games out there that nobody's yeah. ever if, heard if of. If you're it's looking to, to get into older games, I fully recommend starting with PS2 just because there is there is a hundred percent I will guarantee there is a game for everybody on the PS2. There is every single genre you could think of. If you like RPGs, if you like action games, if you like racing games, does it matter? It's on the PS2. I remember playing the two towers on that game. On that awesome. console. It's a great game too. PS2 is one of the best consoles I, I, of all time. I, to be honest, I don't remember any of the uh, the Lord of the Rings games. They're super Except fun. For Lego Honestly, the they're, they're hey, s- they're we might play pretty... them at some point because yeah. I own them because they're awesome. They are the two towers. Two and, towers and, and Return, Return of the King, of the King, are, King awesome. are a lot of fun. Yeah, they're really good. They're a little. They're, they're different genuinely from good each games. Other, they're they're ex- awesome action. I, games. It's one of the few movie licensed games that actually works. Keep talking so John can't say. I only remember the Hey Japan. I only remember the 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 demo disc they did of Return of the King. Oh yeah, and it was. Awful, um, yeah. but the finished game was very good. Really linear, but the combat was really awesome. It's moving. Well, I mean, how do you do a game like game. that where you have a bunch of different stories? That's like I if you know. did like an Agatha Christie novel as a it's as a, a game. That's, that's a good so question. Difficult. If you've never if you've never played it, I will describe specifically the level design in the third game. It was starts brilliant. off at like this, starts off like this. It begins at Helm's Deep. And then from there, it springs into three paths, and you can the choose any of, path. You have to complete yeah. every path. One path is Frodo and Sam. One path is Merry and Pippin, and, or sorry, no, not Merry Pippin. It's Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli. And the third path is Gandalf, which they all tie into every character. So you do and play the as Merry and Pippin. Minas level, like where Minas Tirith as Gandalf was super hard, but that game is very smartly fun. done and really fun. So it's it's any it. sort of like warriors game, like Dynasty Warriors, Hyrule yeah. Warriors, where you just branching paths honestly exactly. we ought to just sit down just for fun and play it's through it really one night fun. it's a lot of fun yeah it's i've i recently i literally just played i don't know if we can like beat it ago. one night but it, we could it's not a long game but we could we could do like a, a long extended stream or or do a long recording session it could be done it's it's not very long but it's really really fun hmm. i highly recommend it okay so uh, i think we've, we've kind of finished that that topic up we've said that deal we've uh we've signed that letter we've uh chucked that cheese Shut up. So, <laughs> the second uh, uh, off-topic topic uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to is retro games versus new games. I wanted to kind of just feel out shortly, quickly, I should say, what your guys' opinions on old games versus new games. Which do you prefer to play, and why you prefer well, to play them, what are, or just the positive negatives of each? What are we considering the cutoff for retro? I'll say anything before the 360 PS3. See, I would because let's say PS one and before. No, I hear. Okay, so <laughs> I'm thinking like anything that's not being produced, I consider retro. Well, here, no games are coming out well, for anything before three sixty. Because you have like uh, Mario and Zelda. This is just an example. Shut up. Um, like you know how they started out as the. Hi, 2D- my name's Jonah, and I love Nintendo. They started out as two D side. <laughs> they started started out as two D side scrollers and such, <laughs> and just around the uh, the area. But now you have these amazing 3D gigantic map games of them. And then like Ocarina of Time, you have uh, uh, Mario 64, Mm -hmm. you have Metroid Prime. I think those are, uh, I think those aren't, those were not retro. Because they started the 3D They're they're definitely not current gen though. Yeah, but. Anything that's not current gen to me, I wouldn't, maybe not consider it, wouldn't consider it retro, but it's definitely old. Okay. Because when you think back to GameCube, that's been out of production for, what, since 2004, 2005? It's, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been like 13 years, almost 15 years since those games, since those consoles have been dead. I mean, PS2 is an exception because that didn't stop production until like 2014. Still probably not sports titles for that game, for that console. But most of the block of the developers stopped producing games for those games once the new stuff came out. And PS3 and Xbox 360 both came out in 2005, or PS3 came out in 2006, there were and a then... Few- and the then Xbox we came out in 2006 as well. And the Xbox One blended through very well, in my opinion. It wasn't a huge jump graphically, they, I think, is well, why. Well, they had games that were on shared platforms, too. Like, you had Dragon yeah. Age Inquisition, which well, was a massive, they beautiful did, game they did that, that came with, out on both at the same time. 
And they've was... done that in the past too. They did that with uh, with Zelda. They did that with uh, Twilight Princess. They released it on both GameCube and the Wii. And um, they also did that recently with uh, uh, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, Breath of the Wild was on Wii. You know, as you well. know what they did that really confused me graphically wise because I didn't think it would have worked. Would have been Metal Gear Solid Five. They released that on not only the 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 current gens, but on like PS3 as well as the uh, yeah. Xbox and they did it well. And I was like, I was impressed. Are consoles not crapping yeah. themselves. Right I was now. impressed at how well the developers learned to work with those consoles because they they made the th- like when you look back at like 360 games from the beginning, not necessarily Halo because Halo the the style of the, of it, even Halo Three was really well done. But some of those older games like um, Lost Planet, oh that Lord. game looked. If you compare it to Lost Planet Three, even it looks really bad. So some of those early 360 or PS3 games just look trash compared to the new stuff because you've got, like, even Shadow of Mordor was released on 360, which I completely forgot about, which released on both Xbox One and 360, PS3 and PS4, and the gra- graphically it still looks really good on 360 and PS3. It's just amazing how well they optimize their developing with those older, knew, older quote-unquote who consoles. Who knew how much power the previous gen. that these, uh, these those consoles Yeah, they really have. milked those things well, dry. what did they say? That the 360 was technically the most, like, Long running slash powerful thing. Uh, the console. Yeah. Con- it was like a sad day when so that far. console died. I weep tears. I would say consistently. I tears. PS4 went, or not PS4, PS2 went longer technically, but they were just pumping out those crappy sports titles pretty much for an eternity. But for a bulk of the, the stuff, like. And Guitar Hero. I, don't, I can't remember what the last game for the 360 was because they were still pumping stuff out for that. Like, they they put on an exclusive Assassin's Creed when Unity came out. They're like, heck. We're not going to give the new gens a game. We're going to make a completely original game Which only for the new gen content. Except and Rogue was awesome. Rogue it was, was better than I'm Unity. I'm sorry, but Rogue was way better than Unity. That's yeah. what I hear. It is really, it's actually genuinely a really good game. It was really good. Yeah, so I, for me, I, I don't really play much of the current gen stuff. I mean, Smite's been out since before the current gen consoles, and that's probably the newest quote-unquote game I've been playing. And that's just just because it's a multiplayer game. It never stops being in development. Just adding new characters. So like I think I have an answer to this question. Proceed. Uh, I'm gonna go with <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna have to go with newer gen then. Okay. Is that just because you play them more? I think it's just because I stuff? play them more, and I don't see myself going back to older games. Yeah. Uh, like I recently tried to replay Majora's Mask, not on the uh 3ds. Is rough. Yeah. Is very rough. Yeah, they're, 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 you have to be in a specific mindset to play some of those older games. I always go back and play old games. I would actually say the the current gen console I play the most, my PS4 basically has become a streaming machine lately just because I haven't been playing it that much, but that's the, really the, the only new next gen console I play or the new gen console I play. And I have the Xbox one, but I don't really play it all that much, to be honest. But PlayStation Vita, I played the crap out of, and that came out a long time ago. You should get Spider Man and God of War. Those are I do need to get those games. Yeah. Those are, they have some awesome games coming out. Horizon Zero Dawn as well. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I do have that, and I've been playing that a little bit. It's it's, cool. They have some amazing games nowadays, graphically, and even the stories just. They're, they're, the stories aren't getting any worse. They're just as good, if not better, nowadays, because they're basically interactive movies, when back then it was a little bit more harder to make a better crafting story. Yes, you with your hand out. up. Hey, this is me. Um. So, I have an answer as well. Um, uh, for me, when it comes to retro versus modern, uh, it's a little bit of everything. Because there's days where I'm just like, you know what? I want to bust out my uh, Xbox original or I want to uh, bust out my PS1 and play something old. And yeah. I enjoy that. Like, one of my favorite games to play is a game called Crimson Skies well, that, that I got for like a dollar. Let on... me ask you this though, this, though. Do you sit down and you bust out your old consoles and you play through a game or you play for a couple sessions? Oh, I definitely play more different. modern games because they pump, they pump out faster. But I would say that I hold a lot of value and still can enjoy older games. Sure. And I love the fact that they're coming out with mini retro consoles, you know, for people to enjoy those yeah, games. Makes them more accessible. That are a little bit games. more accessible. And they're also... Um, they're also a little bit more optimized, and they and they touch up a little thing, few things here and there, which is cool. Some consoles, some of these modern uh, consoles that are going like modern classics or whatever you want to call them, actually have ports that you can add emulate, you know, emulations and stuff. They don't encourage yeah. it, but right. they do it. Oh, yeah, you're talking um, about the um, the Neo Geo. The yeah, yeah, the Neo just Geo. Out, throw the, an emulator SD card in it. That's really cool. I have one more thing to say, and then I'll let you go, Jonah. But, like, for me, it's just, like, there's so many, like, good games nowadays when it comes to, like you said, especially games, like, from Bethesda, 
used to be Bioware, um, uh, and then you got play people like the CD Projekt Red people, people who make games like Life is Strange. You know, you just have a million different people who really want to reinvent telling an amazing story. Okay. And I feel, piece. yeah, rip, rip, tell, tell. Uh, but I just feel like How modern you games. How developers that focus on multiplayer? Epic Games? Revolution? They are the true masters of this age. Moving on. Uh, I just feel like modern games, like, I mean, the, the older games did tell good stories, too. He's knocking it, but Fortnite's the most popular game right now. It has been for a few months. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, hey, well, um, they didn't invent the genre, but they definitely, I wouldn't say perfected it. They Despacito they on it. and that Des- song by the Des- Asian Des- guy. Those How are, are the you most... going to compare Fortnite <laughs> and Despacito? Who listens to Despacito anymore? Mm, a lot of people. Anyways, the point is, is that, like that some of the most annoying racist. things were the most uh, were the most popular <laughs> things, like Gangnam Style. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> like, let's be real. <laughs> A lot of those stuff, some of the most annoying, annoying things in the world, end up becoming the most popular for at least a time. Well, Fortnite, Fortnite will Fortnite fall. Annoying. It might be anno- the amount of the, the popularity might be annoying to you, but the game itself, it's not a bad game. It's really not. You're just probably mad that it's being shoved down your throat all the time with advertisements, people playing it all the time. But totally. if you actually sat there and played it, if you enjoyed that type of game, it's really fun. Uh, it actually, so is. I. Real quick, but you're an RPG guy, and that's that's your shoe thing, so you can't appreciate it as much. <laughs> I don't no, shut I said, up. I can much. appreciate multiplayer games. It's a good I said, game. I but specifically I just, said you can't appreciate as one, much. The thing is, Here it's it goes, one shoving a bamboo stick up his butthole, getting all hurt. You always say I'm an RPG person, and I can't appreciate anything else. I didn't say that. I said you can't appreciate it as much as it's you could appreciate one game mode. And I can't play the same game mode over and over and over again. You one played thing that Skyrim I for three years straight. I'm talking about multiplayer. Yeah! How is it any di- You can't. I'm bit leaping that too. Oh my How's that any different? People need to get over it. <laughs> How's it any different from playing Fortnite over and over again, from playing Skyrim over and over again? It's the same thing. No, it's a multiplayer game versus a single player game. It's a completely different thing. How, explain how it's different. I'm not kidding. So I'm looking at right the now. designs of the planes and the crimson skies. And <laughs> no, seriously. Explain to me how stupid. it's different. It's the exact same scenario. It, the only difference is it's multiplayer and single player. There's a million sense. different ways to play Skyrim. And There's really not. Fortnite. It's all the same thing. You play one character, you play different quests. It doesn't make any sense how different quests. Jonah's always here trying to, to create peace and stuff like that because of like debates. <laughs> There's. <laughs> There's, there's these planes look so stupid in this game. How did you play this? That game's so fun though. <laughs> the plane combat is how dumb super these great. Look. It's how super does that great. one even fly? We're gonna play this game. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. It looks like a sausage. You look like a sausage. <laughs> wow, wow, that's messed up. All right, I'm sorry. I'm running on like four hours of sleep. That's why he's so bamboo butthurt. <laughs> That's why he's so bamboo butthurt. In 12 years, wait for that shirt. It's coming out, I promise. <laughs> um, well, I mean, what t- what was your final opinion? I don't play much current gen con. Uh, like, I don't play much current gen consoles, but I would say... Basically, because I play multiplayer games the most, because that's what I have the most time for. It's easy to just play a match and set it down. Um, I, I would probably still say I play current gen more, even though retro games, I, I it's probably for me fifty five fifty or fifty five forty five, fifty five forty five. I play new games fifty five percent of the time, and older games forty five percent of the time. Okay, that that makes more sense. Uh, to explain that. Yeah, numbers hurt. <laughs> So with that said, <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna move to to the the end of the, the end of the podcast Real quick. here. We have one more short topic. What was of, that? Of things we're looking forward to at the end of 2018 and for the next year, 2019. Um, we're gonna go. If you have two games you're looking forward to and two movies you're looking forward to, let's lift them both off. Um, and we'll just kind of go from there. If we have anything else to say after that, we can continue the topic. With, with some more topics, but two movies, and two, two games. Maybe, two movies, two games. You're looking forward to in the future that are not yet out. Too. So um, I have mine written down. So if you guys need a minute to think, I I can go ahead and just list mine mine off specifically. Um, my specifically two games I'm looking forward to are uh, from Ubisoft. It's Skull and Bones, which is basically you just take the pirate stuff and the ship stuff, naval warfare from Assassin's Creed, and you make it an entire game. It's just that engine, right? Yeah, and it looks awesome. It I looks... can't remember. Does it look as derpy as Sea of Thieves? Because Sea of Thieves looks... No, no, no. It's, no. it's it's actual... It's not it's that... Skull and Bones, right? 
Yeah, it's not like weird art style or anything. They didn't try to go in super creative. It's it looks awesome. I laughed when they advertised Sea of Thieves like it was the next coming of Jesus and everything. It looks like an MMO. And then it ended up being like it ended up bombing at first. And yeah, then I think they fixed it. It took some time so. to get it to get it. I wouldn't say right, but they they adjusted it. But the, they tried to do some wacky MMO art style to make it more timeless. But it Which didn't really work. Which is fine, but it just looks. Stupid. It didn't really work like they wanted to. I think it looks a little bit silly. Uh, but yeah, Skull and Bones is a little bit more realistic and looks really, really it fun. It looks really just cool. like Assassin's Creed 4. Yeah, it looks awesome. I'm really pumped for that. And then my second game is uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, which is from uh, from Software. It is not really a soul How does sequel. How Shadows Die in the first place? Good question. I'm still thinking about it. It's not necessarily at least for right game. now. I don't know it to be a Souls uh, successor or anything like that, but it's from the same developers and has... From the trailer, from what I could see, has similar combat in some respects, a little bit maybe, but it, it looks very different and looks really cool. It looks really interesting to me. Uh, so, you guys, I'll say. Wait, this, one I'll second. Can we go back to Skull and Bones real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember the trailer for that game, and at the end, there was something in- interesting happening. Do you remember that? I don't. With the, the I'm, I'm assuming the Kraken. Oh. Yeah, that looks really interesting. That you is sold the me. biggest version I've ever seen of that monster, by the way. Like, you sold it's, me. I was it's my name. bigger than the ship, which was a big ship. Yeah, I'm really pumped for that game. I feel like it's going to be it's gonna be a little bit over the top at some points, but I'm so excited. That's what you want. Yeah, that's exactly what <laughs> yeah. I want. It's absolutely what I want. It's. Yeah, I am really pumped for that game. I'm probably, I'm not going to pre-order it. I might wait for a pre-review but to come out get or something some like that. Cool but pre-order bonuses. Don't give a poop what I get from them. Screw I'm GameStop. Not pre-order from GameStop. <laughs> get the heck out of here. Pre-order from Toys R Us. Whoa. Of the I don't know about that. We're not. I'm gonna bleep that too. Yeah, please bleep that. Uh, timestamp one oh eight. Uh, so <laughs> forty three. <laughs> timestamp forty three minutes. Games, Jonah. Um, two. If you had to, I'm definitely gonna say uh, Metroid Prime Four. I'm very interested to see how they're gonna pull that one off yeah. without retro. Um, so they're either gonna make one of the coolest games ever, which is gonna bomb entirely. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Echoes. <laughs> that light suit though, that was amazing, and then just the rest of the game was like. <laughs> uh, and then definitely, I'm gonna say the Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is coming out a couple of days from now. Yeah, I mean, I think three came out. It said twenty nineteen for everybody. Oh, is it? I see. Yeah. Um. It, yeah. He said twenty nineteen. Is it late twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen? Oh, never mind. which we're all stating this podcast My by apologies. saying that's great. See, but it's cool. Uh, so I I wonder how they're gonna do it since the last game was literally called Assassin's Creed Origins and it's set before it. So that'll be interesting. Um, I've heard really good things about it though. I've heard nothing about it because Odyssey? I haven't watched any reviews yet. Oh, well. I heard a lot of good things, things about I've it heard about going it. into it. Yeah, it, that's what I've heard is those few things about it. And hey, technically, I'm, I'm excited for Assassin's Creed 3 again. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Game, Zach. Oh, Bethesda Showcase 2018 at E3. <laughs> that's cheating. Uh, I would say probably Doom Eternal. If you haven't seen the trailer for Doom Eternal, oh my God. I thought you said Doomy Eternal. Like, Stop the it. Heck? Bleep that out. No, if I can't, can't say something that's about that comedy. Thing, I can't bleep that. No, oh no, my no. god, I hate you. <laughs> Anyways, I would say Doom Eternal. If you haven't watched the trailer yet, you both need to see it. It is I saw trailer for amazing. That. Cool. The end he whips out this giant sword to fight. Hey, bleep I'm that. just you probably bleep that. Anyways <laughs> And I I don't know. I heard that this game is playable. I don't know from start to finish. What are you talking about? But if Starfield comes out in 2019, uh, yeah. I doubt it. I think it's going to be a 2020 release. Probably. But well, it's been it. a while. And they have like four or five different studios now. Yeah. So it may get like they may be working on it. And there may be a Fallout 4 situation where we have, uh, hey, uh, we got Fallout 4. When do you want it? You want it right now? Okay, well, you got to wait two months and then you can get it. That's exactly yeah. how Todd Howard talks, by the way. That's but if I were all. to say a not uh, Starfield thing, I would probably say... Um, 
I don't know. I will add an honorable mention for myself. Uh, Star Wars Spyro Jedi. Reignited. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Respawn Entertainment. I really I'm like, not holding my breath for that one. I'm not expecting it to be great, but I like Respawn Entertainment. They do really cool, really cool things with Titanfall. Titanfall was really fun, and I think they're a quality developer, and they could potentially put something out that's yeah, really cool. Going to be as cool as uh, Jedi Outcast. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, but it's Maybe being not. ran by EA, so we'll see how well that goes. You like Battlefront too? Ooh. Yeah, but it was terrible at first. That doesn't mean anything. They fixed it. That's beside the point. Mm. Get gooder. They did fix it. You said it yourself. Yes. They fixed it. And you said you should play it because they fixed it. You told me that. Yes, but my point is that going forward, you can't trust EA until the finished product is out. Zach has a bias where he hates EA no matter what yeah. they do. So yeah, I don't always trust his opinion on that. But yeah, I'm still looking forward to news. it. I'm still looking forward to it because Respawn has put out good things. Why are you Moving on. Crossing your snowball. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Star Snowballs Wars Jedi Mike. Fallen Order. I'm still pumped for it regardless. Um, so movies. I had a giant list of things I was looking forward to, but I narrowed it down to two things in specific that I figure you guys won't have on your list. So I'll let you guys go first. I'll start with Zach. Two movies you're excited for for the future. I'll take both of mine. I'm going to kill you in your sleep. Pretty sure there's a My Little Pony coming out. Ooh, that's insane. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, your one. that's one. Avengers and Star Wars. Suck it, nerds. Okay, so in Avengers, Infinity War. I can't think of anything two. else that's coming Star out next Wars year. So. Are they still calling it Part Two? There's, I don't think there's an official title yet. That's just what I'm calling it. Oh, I, mean, okay. I haven't seen an official title for it. I think they nixed it. It's gonna be point. Avengers. Everyone comes back. That's that's the title. Yeah, Avengers. Everybody comes back. Avengers: Infinity <laughs> We're War. We're back. Two farther story, home. except for Quicksilver. Mm. <laughs> I think it's gonna be Avengers. See, here's the thing: if they don't bring back Quicksilver. They're not bringing it back. When they have the time stone to do it. Oh, also, if you look at the quantum realm, there's a little tiny city that you can save it for Lorecast. It's in the movie. (laughs) Jonah, your two picks. Uh, well, Infinity War Part Two, the second coming, was mine. Farther from home. (laughs) Further as home are coming. (laughs) So that's featuring one of them. Homer Simpson. We want to see the end of that. Supposedly, yeah. Um, And the after credit scene is going to be Galactus and how it got. Please let there be Howard the Duck. I don't know why everyone loves. Howard when I went Duck to Disneyland, so I almost bought you a Howard the Duck trophy. Oh, but he didn't because for he didn't care. Howard the Duck next Avenger. I'm pushing I didn't have it. Space Russo for Brothers, it. if you're listening to this somehow, what make is so it great about how, with a stupid? Because it, it, it makes no sense for him to be there. He's just like, hey, I'm Howard the Duck. I'm Seth Green. <laughs> uh, is that who played him in? Uh, <laughs> yeah, in that little every one time. scene. Both. That's of them. why he was so obnoxious and yeah. weird. Anyway. Uh, the next one, Godzilla, uh, King, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Yes. Yeah. Holy crap. I'm pumped for that It's going to get gnarly. I'm it is on a scale that is more epic than I would say Lord of the Rings. Rodan still feels out of place, in my opinion, but I'm excited to see him flapping his big old wings around. Causing some cool. thunderstorms and some fire. That's King Ghidorah, you idiot. Yeah, idiot. Say it for the cast. Uh, so my uh, top two things I'm looking forward to movies wise for the for the upcoming year and the end of this year. My number one is definitely Hellboy. I'm super excited for that movie. I really like the first two Hellboys, upset. and I I haven't watched Stranger Things, but I I like the at least the appearance of David Harbour as as Hellboy. I, Looks he really got ripped. Cool. I'm so yeah. scared about that. Probably a little bit of. Of prosthetics going on there, but I'm missing Ron. I, I was gonna already. say I love Ron Perlman. Yeah. I'm gonna miss. I him. love Ron Perlman. I was hoping but to Jonah, see a, a Hellboy three with war, him. But... War never changes. Yeah, there's that. He was also in Gun. Yeah, he was. I I, was... You, you, if if we can get away with that game, we should play it. <laughs> no, we could. We, we can't. Definitely could play we probably can. There's a lot. We of, can't get away with that game. There's a lot it's, of things happening there. It's a very very hard rated M. We could censor. Yeah, it. yeah. yeah there kidding. is no. I'm not gonna edit that video. Hold on, fun with Hold that. on. I'm pause. Not that video. There is no nudity in that. Really? Yeah, you don't okay. see anything. At, there's spoiler alert. There's a scene with the girl in the bath, but you still don't see anything. We can just put like some like fun kittens in the, in the tub. Stop. Not implying anything. <laughs> Castle like water. Unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> and then my number two. It was hard to pick for me to narrow it down to two that I wanted to mention, but so I'll mention two more. Uh, Joker and specifically Mowgli and his circus's new Jungle Book reboot or not reboot but Jungle Book movie. Wait a second, I thought you were really in the same movie. No, no. Like what? The Joker with Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix. I'm excited to see his rendition of Joker, Joker. I in think it Mowgli. Be interesting. Yeah, 
And then Mowgli, because Andy Serkis is awesome. And he's super, That's super, gonna be super like cool. a super dark version of it, too. I hope so. Like, just from what I've seen. I'm, from the trailer, it looks like it's gonna be a little bit darker, for absolutely. I'm, I'm very intrigued by that. Uh, but also, Christian Bale is Vagira. There's a lot of big yeah, names in that. There's a lot in that movie. of big names. Christian Bale's a, a jerk of a person, but he's an amazing actor, and I love his. He's movie. not always a jerk. He definitely not has always. his moments. Yeah, definitely has so, his moments. But if you've heard some of the, he's no Kevin Spacey. I was gonna say, have we all heard that that clip of him freaking out during Terminator oh, yeah. Salvation? Yeah, that's one of my favorite clips of all time. I love that. Whenever he's freaking out. Ooh, I love amazing. Terminator Salvation. By the way, I thought it was. I, I like that movie. I liked it. I never watched well, it. Here's the thing: it's not set in the past. You're in. The, the 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 fallout or whatever. Yeah. I never out. watched Salvation and I completely ignored Genesis because I didn't want to put myself through that. So I just keep watching. So Terminator I watched Genesis over and over again. Accident the other day. On accident, what does that mean? So you sat there for an hour and forty five minutes on well, accident. It was on, and I was like, eh, "Is it gonna be good?" That's not an accident. <laughs> you saw that it was there, and you're like, "Oh." Then you sat there and watched it. Um. So you stumbled upon it on accident. Can I just point out that it? Arnold Schwarzenegger did a role there, <laughs> but he wouldn't do a friggin' cameo in the Predator. Oh, that. Yeah, Terminator, the Genesis I heard was crash. Isn't he in another, isn't Arnold going to be in another Terminator with another, with the same girl? Yeah, with, um... They're making a sequel to Genesis? I'm oh almost positive my. that it's, it's on with Laura, or whatever her name is, from the original. Yeah. Like, they, I just saw a picture on his Instagram about him posting that he's, he's glad to be back working with her again. He looks like a Terminator. Yeah. Oh my Looks goodness, like a Terminator. Also, Rambo 5. That's oh, going to be weird. I love Rambo 5. Old... Stallone. I've actually never seen and any he's of the in a cowboy getup. Mm, moving on. I've actually never seen any of the Rambo movies. Day I. Yeah. Okay. Well, on that note, we will move to the conclusion. Thank you all for joining us for the first episode of the Nerd Force One pa- podcast. I hope you enjoyed your flight. Exit is to the left. Thank you. And once again. I need a vomit bag. Bye. Salute. The kid is kicking my chair.